Americans are capable of achieving extraordinary things when they have the freedom and opportunity to do so. This is American Potential, and here's your host, Jeff Crank. All right, well, thanks for listening. Thank you for joining us on the podcast. As always, we really appreciate you listening to the program. By the way, would love to have you leave a five-star review for us on iTunes or Spotify or whatever podcast platform you use. We already have over 600 five-star reviews on iTunes. I mean, we've only been doing this podcast for two months. Uh, 600 five-star reviews on iTunes and almost 800 five-star reviews on Spotify. So thanks for keeping those great reviews coming. Appreciate you listening and, and joining us on this podcast as we continue to grow. It's just been a great project and a lot of fun. Um, I Look, we have a great topic today. When it comes to school learning environments, one size just doesn't fit all. And a lot of students can sit in a classroom and they can learn from a teacher. Other students, they're just not that way, especially when a student has something called ADHD. ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder, makes it very difficult for a student to sit, listen, and focus on what someone is saying in general, let alone in a classroom. And that's why a typical classroom may not be the best learning environment for a student with ADHD. Our guest today did some outside of the box thinking, and they opened a school in Utah that is specifically geared towards boys from fourth to eighth grade who have been diagnosed with ADHD. The founder of the school did research into how to help ADHD students not only learn, but thrive. And their learning environments are not the typical classroom, but in, let's say, a forest, in a museum, a library, businesses, community recreation centers, parks. Sounds unique. Sounds different. Sounds out of the box. Parents have seen their ADHD sons thrive in this environment, and they want to have their other children attend the school, but due to not having a diagnosis for their other children, they're unable to attend. But now, because of the Utah Fits All scholarship that was just passed this year, the school will be able to open up more spots for other children to attend. And our guest today is the founder of Breakout School, Dalen Richardson, to talk about the school and how Utah Fits All will help benefit the students of Utah. Dalen, thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Okay, so it, I hear uh, Monica, who is, who is uh, our content coordinator for the show, she told me that you are a pharmacist, right? That's right. And, and so how did you, I need to know the story about how you went from being a pharmacist to, to having this school and running and operating this school? You bet. I, I think it's almost unique. So I uh, practiced pharmacy for 20 years and had, had, had an absolutely rewarding and rich uh, career. And um, between jobs, my sister approached me and said, hey, you know, there is a major crisis going on. And she happens to be a clinical counselor, and she's been involved in alternative education for a long time. And so she said, you know, Dal, you've got to look at, at what's going on. And I said, well, what's going on? I don't know anything. I've, I've been a pharmacist. I've been stuck in a pharmacy counting pills. And she said, the, there, we're seeing an entire generation of boys who are being completely left behind and lost. So she turned me on to some uh, books. And once I started seeing what was happening, I, I had to agree with her. I said, this, this, is, this is massive. This is not a small thing. This, this is, this is uh, changing kind of the whole culture, the whole, every, you know, this is changing everything. And mm-hmm. basically, in a nutshell, it was that boys are just expected to not be boys. And then multiply that with a boy with ADHD. Mm-hmm. You can just imagine 
how much harder it is for him to be able to deal with the system that looks at just regular boys as a problem. Yeah. And, and they actually are trying to stifle the regular uh, boys from doing regular things that boys are programmed by their genetics and by their brains to do times it by 10 with a boy with ADHD. So what happens is they're, they're, they're told they're broken. They're told that they, they don't belong. They don't fit in. I loved how you said, you know, that these are boys that just don't fit in. Mm -hmm. And that is so true. Right. And, and then the worst thing is because of that, they're ostracized. Um, they're bullied just mercilessly. And even the system itself doesn't really uh, uh, reach out to them and say, hey, we're here to rescue you. Mm -hmm. It actually, it, it, it reinforces the bullying. It's saying you really are different and you need to act like, you know, something else. Something that mm -hmm. you, your brain is not screaming at you to act like. Yeah. D Dalen, it, it, it also seems though, too, that like, these are not, I mean, we're not talking about boys who aren't smart. A lot of times they're, they're just as smart as any other kid, right? It's just that they, they don't thrive and flourish in the same kind of learning environment. Right. I'm famous for saying ADHD is a superpower and it, and it really <laughs> is. Right. I, I raised yeah. two, I raised two children of my own with ADHD and what I found, especially with my son, was that um, when he had failures, and boy, did he have lots of failures, because, mm -hmm. you know, he had to go through the system, and I saw what it did to him. And failure after failure after failure, and, and I thought, you know, if I had to go through that, I would just give up and mm -hmm. just say, right. I, I can't do anything, and just give up. He was so resilient. I, I, and I always have told people, I don't know if it's a product of just having lots of failures in your life, why you bounce up or what it was, mm -hmm. but you could not hold him down. He right. would just shrug and go, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do something else or I'll try something else. And I'm, I'm happy to report he is a, a very, very successful uh, 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 individual right now um, right. as a, as a 21 year old. He, he, uh, but he had to go through all the hard things. And so back to my sister, my sister said, Hey, you, you start a school. If you start a school that can rescue these boys, you will make a difference in the world. You really will. Mm -hmm. And so then I started looking at it. She just mentioned, she said, have you thought of one that isn't inside a schoolroom that's out in nature? And I said, well, that sounds interesting. I've heard of the four schools in Europe and things like that. And she said, you ought to research that. Well, I did. And the research is just stunning that, uh, and these are both, you know, whether they have ADHD, mm -hmm. autism, they're neurotypical, it doesn't matter. Uh, and boys and girls, by the way. Right. Um, and what it is, is when they're exposed to a natural environment, their academic performance skyrockets. Hmm. And so I said, wow, the, the evidence is right here. I'm going to actually put it into practice. I did. And the rest is history. Right. And they just need a different type of environment to learn in. Is that right? Well, you know, someone could argue, well, you know, who knows if they actually need it. Right. But when you actually do it and they have miraculous results where the parents mm -hmm. are like, what in the world did you do with my son? You, you. You kidnapped him and put him up in a spaceship and then they put a clone down in his place because he's a different kid. Right. He's completely different. And that gives him more, that gives that boy more confidence too. Right. And you talked about that's uh, your exactly son. right. Yeah. That, kind of overcoming, you know, the failures and the disappointments and things through life and th that their success breeds more success in them. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Now you do, you don't call the boys who attend your school. You don't call them students. What do you call them? They're heroes. Yeah. And, and, and tell us why you call them heroes. And sure. Tell, maybe you got a couple of examples of, mm -hmm. of some of the boys and the kinds of heroes that you have at the school. Yeah. 
So, you know, I thought of this as like a, kind of a superhero academy type deal. <laughs> and it, 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 it really, it, it, it really brings to bear the truth that the way you treat someone now is the way they'll become. If you treat a man like he is the most valuable thing on earth, he will become that type of man. Right. And so you start with what you call them. So I, I never refer to them as students, not once, ever. Hmm. So right. I always say, heroes, gather up, let's do this. Heroes, let's do that. Okay, heroes. And it, also, it's a good thing to remind them, hey, a hero wouldn't talk like that. Or um, if you ask like a hero, yes, you can get it. Um, so they're hearing that word over and over, but it's not empty. We talk about what it means to be a hero. And probably the most unifying thing that heroes do is sacrifice. They sacrifice. If you read all the great, you know, Odysseus, any of the great heroes of, of classical literature, you find out that the, the main uh, meme or motif is that of sacrifice. They have to sacrifice something to accomplish their mission. And so we talk about that all the time. And what do you think these, these boys are actually sacrificing? They're sacrificing their immediate gratification for something greater. Mm -hmm. And that is something that is so rare to find in boys anywhere in the United States that they almost, it's almost been driven out of them due to, um, you know, technology that they can hold right in their hand due to, uh, uh, you know, uh, schools that just don't know how to uh, positively discipline uh, due to parents who think that by becoming their friends, instead of being parents, they're doing them a favor and they let them do whatever they want. So here at Breakout School, we actually teach not only self-government, meaning they, they govern themselves, but we teach them really about sacrifice, about you know, holding off on that uh, gratification until they accomplish what they need to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, ADHD is incredibly well known for not being able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, a boy with ADHD, the impulsivity is just one of the hallmarks of the syndrome. And yet what we've done at breakout school is teach them how to hold off on that and, and wait and do something that is a little bit difficult first and then have that sweet reward later on. Right. Right. Now, one of the things that you help or you have them do is you ha have the heroes help pay for their tuition and you, you have them create a plan as I understand it, right. That will, you give them a project. So t tell me a little bit about that. I think that's really intriguing. So yeah, that, that is one that, um, we do through what's called um, Kid CEO, and it is a program that my sister actually uh, developed. Mm -hmm. And what it is, it teaches them how to start and, and operate a business. Now, let me be completely upfront. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have had several businesses started, and I would consider them successful, but they don't continue. <laughs> Right. Because okay. that's but that's hard. not that's not that different from the real world. Either. Yeah, it's true. Let's, let's it, isn't true. it? Isn't it one out of twenty? <laughs> right in five yeah, years. Right. Right. Um, but with with boys with ADHD, that's even it's even harder mm -hmm. because that you know for many of them money. Even though you would think, hey, I'm getting money, and I, I had one that started a business uh, cooking, uh, baking goods, and things like that, and. You know, he made several hundred dollars and I think one night, whatever. And I, I, I was just ecstatic going, look, look what you've done. Oh, my gosh, look what you've done. And he just kind of went, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and I started to wonder, why are you so, you know, why aren't you as happy as I am? And then I, I started realizing, you know, abstract things, you know, money, believe it or not, is an abstract concept. Sure. And it, it's kind of an intermediary, right? It's like, oh, you have to give me this and then I give you the, oh, okay, yeah, I think I know what money is. And yeah, <laughs> they know how to use money, 
But really intrinsically, I don't think they really understand money. And, and we teach it, we, we, you know, we just keep you know, trying to, to tell them what it is, what it could be in their lives, but it's very difficult. Uh, and remember something you probably have never heard, and it's true. A brain of a boy with ADHD is one third younger than their chronological age. Are you aware of that? That means a 12 year old is really seven, maybe seven mm -hmm. and a half. Right. So you're adding on that difficulty of understanding, you know, abstract concepts like money. And then you're telling, you know, someone that maybe nine, who's actually, you know, f six <laughs> right. and say, you need to understand this. You know, it, it, it's just very difficult for them. So I, I, I love that they've done it. They've created these businesses. But here's the good news. Just like Utah Fits All, there are, there are other wonderful scholarships that are on board that have been able to pay for the entire tuition. So thank heavens for Utah Fits All because that will expand the opportunities for so many future heroes and even neurotypical heroes. We mm -hmm. have gifted heroes. It's not just ADHD. We have those who have autism or on the spectrum and they've all been benefited so much. But Utah fits all such a blessing for yeah. the future because it will enable so many more heroes to have access because without, you know, an IEP, or a diagnosis, it's really difficult to get the funding to afford private school. With mm -hmm. Utah Fits All, that opens up everything. And my yeah. only beef is I wish you got I wish the legislature had started it this year <laughs> instead of <laughs> next well, year. Yeah. Well, I know it, there were a lot of people trying to get it through two years ago and the yep. legislature I just was, wasn't willing to do that, as you know. I was um, one of the ones pushing for it. Yep. Well, and let me, I want to point out a couple of things. One, you talked about the, the difference in, in the brain for ADHD and you talked about, is it seven years? Is that what you said? Seven year difference? It's a third of their age. You take a third of their age off and that's their real brain age. And see what that, what that tells us is how important it is to, to have a system that educates these kids in the way that they should be educated, because that's a, that's a gigantic chasm when they're six or when they're nine, it's not that big of a deal when you're 50 and you, and you know, you know, it's just as, as they grow older, that the, the effects of that are less, but it's really a stunning difference when they're young and when they're, they're in school, right? It's massive. Yeah. And, and it's un it's un it's unaddressed in yes. any of the public schools or, or even any charter schools. It's right. completely unaddressed. And their only answer is, okay, put them in resource, uh, IEP something. And, and the problem with that is, you know, it segregates them, as you know, mm -hmm. and it, it, it kind of singles them out. So it's very hard for them not to feel like, Hey, I don't fit here. You know, I'm a failure or whatever. Right. Whereas at break high school, everything is, uh, uh, at their own pace. There's no, we, we never say grades. It's like, no, you're not a sixth grader. You're not a fifth grader. You're a hero. That's it. Mm -hmm. And right. so once they realize that they go, Oh, I, I, I am at my own speed. I'm at my own pace. Okay. And it's amazing to see when the pressure is taken off to perform for some strange, you know, uh, standard that someone has just put right. out there saying, well, this is where they need to be. Who, who, who determines that? I mean, if that's the case, you wouldn't see the results that we see on the NAEP test of 27% of seniors who can uh, uh, write, read and write and 23, 25% who can do math at their level. Yeah. So, you know, it, 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 if you're so worried about where people are, well, you wouldn't have results like that. Right. So yeah. it's far more important to, to take them individually and say, where are you not, where are you compared to, you know, some, some strange uh, standard, you know, standards. I, I know why they do it because they have to somehow prove 
oh, we're doing something. You know, where, yeah. but what's funny is when you actually take them away and you don't, you know, you don't sit there and, and kind of, you know, uh, uh, lord it over uh, uh, the student when, when they're a hero at breakout school and they suddenly see the light. And it takes a while for many of them to see the light, but it, it's, it's when they go, I, I, I can go as fast as I want. And I say, yes, you do not have to slow down <laughs> at all. You don't have to stay yeah. with the class. You can fly ahead as fast as you want. And then it's so fun, especially in math, when they, when they go to a new concept, we do it, we practice it for very, you know, like maybe one half hour session. And they've only done the first little, you know, exercise. And there's like 11 in the book, you know, more. And they say, you know, I think I got this. And I'm like, okay. And they go, give me the test. <laughs> I mean, how, where have you seen that in any other school? Where yeah. the, the students are actually saying, give me the test. I'm yes. ready to challenge it now. That's what they do over and over. Right. And the test becomes fun to them. Then right. they're just like, I've got this. I'm going to knock this out. Boom. And I'm like, wow, you just went through chapter 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You know what? I'm just like, I can't keep up with you. You know, let me go run some more tests off. <laughs> yeah. And what's interesting about this too, I want to point this out and then I want to get to this Utah fits all and, and, and how that's benefiting you because that's, that's really, uh, you know, public policy that's changed and going to make a difference here. But I think it's we should point out here, uh, oftentimes when you talk about educational freedom and educational choice and allowing parents to decide where they want to send their child, a lot of the argument from the other side is, well, this will just be a bunch of private schools that only cater to the to the easy kids to teach and will and the public schools will be left with the trouble kids. This turns that argument on its head because you are taking the the the, the kids that are tough to educate and you're giving them a better way to be educated and that's making a difference in their lives. Exactly. I mean, I'm proof, you know, breakout school is proof positive. That sure. The, the ones that don't fit in the system are typically the ones that the parents out of desperation are looking for other options. Mm -hmm. A person who's doing very well in public school and can, you know, uh, thrive in that environment um, by and large, the parents don't want to yank that kid out of school. Uh, think about it. Take them away from their friends, from their, the social structure they have, uh, you know, and think the whole bullying situation is probably the, probably the biggest issue, I believe, right. of mm -hmm. neurotypical uh, children is, you know, th these schools claim that they're zero tolerance, but the stories we hear from, you know, so many times coming back from the system is, oh, no, <laughs> the bullying was just horrific. And right. so, you know, it's, they've obviously failed in that regard. They, they haven't stopped the bullying. So yeah. for those, you know, for those who are uh, uh, for those who are at risk and those who are. Uh, different and usually it's those with ADHD, autism, and the like. Those are the ones that can be best served outside the system. Um, and what I would say is the gifted uh, students, those who are said, "No, no, no, you're, you're going too fast. We're going to stay here at this chapter," and it can be just as devastating for them. Sure. As yeah. for the, as for the, uh, you know the. Uh, those with ADHD and autism right. because they check out because they get so bored. Sure. They check out. And whereas, you know, a school like breakout school can actually, it, that's why both we have gifted and those with ADHD and autism and they mm -hmm. all thrive just because right. the gifted never have to slow down. And we've just said the ADHD, you know, those with ADHD and autism, it's a superpower. Well, guess what? It really is. And, and that's what, it just breaks my heart to, to hear the parents tell me what their previous life was like when they couldn't even pass anything. You know, they, they were, yeah. the average is four years behind in math when wow. they reach me. Four years. Yeah. And in one year, our average is three grade level uh, 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 progress. In one year in math. Yeah. That's, and that's, 
that's that's remarkable. Um, I know we're, we're almost out of time. I did want to ask you a question, though, about Utah fits all, because this is this scholarship program that just that just passed in Utah. Uh, it's it's been a long time coming, and there's been a lot of effort. You were involved in it, you yes. know, for for several years trying to get this passed. But talk about so so that is essentially education savings accounts, which will allow for for money to be set aside for for parents to choose the educational option that works works best for their kids. It's tailor made for a school like yours. And talk about how this law is now going to transform what you do and how many children can be helped. Right. It'll transform it completely. Um, uh, it will be almost limitless uh, right. who we can help. Uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to expand in a modular fashion uh, throughout the state. But back to, you know, the miracle of Utah fits all. It it's for everyone. So uh, you, you should you should see some of these parents just struggle to try and get a scholarship for their child with a disability because it's just so difficult. And Utah fits all. On the other hand, it's like, hey, just basically either homeschool them or, uh, you know, go to a private school uh, or anything uh, except for, you know, public or charter. And here is the $8,500 per year to allow your child to have that other option. It is tremendous Mm -hmm. because it helps neurotypical. And and frankly, someone doesn't have to go, you know, to the the trouble of getting a diagnosis. Some parents don't want their child to be diagnosed. You know, they're like, "This this could be a bad thing for the rest of his life. Well, guess what? Utah fits all. It really means Utah fits all. This is no joke that, mm-hmm. that those words actually mean something because it's everyone now. Right. And, and so if I were to tell a family in two years, which one to go for, you know, is it the Carson Smith, you know, Children's First or, or Utah fits all? I would say, you know, unless you need more than 8,500 and mm-hmm. there are some that pay more, you go with Utah fits all. Because right. that's there. It's there. It, it's available. You don't have to, you know, do anything difficult to, to qualify for it. And, and, it, and just like in the other states that these have been uh, used in, it is opening up an entire world for parents who, who want something else for their kids. Yeah. Something extraordinary. And parents know best, right? Parents know they best do. about their own children. And that's what this is all about. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't really fault the system if you've got your kids in a public school system, but a teacher, you know, there's a third grade teacher. And then when the kid leaves there, they go off on summer break, they come back and there's a different teacher, fourth grade teacher. So they may not know what's been handed off on that kid, where their deficiencies are, but guess who does know the parent. And that's why the parent ought to be making this choice. And that's the, the great thing about the empowerment of what educational savings accounts or in Utah, this Utah fits all uh, program does. And so it, it's, it's tremendous that, that we have this. And I'm really looking forward to see how two years from now, this changes what you're doing, uh, how much more it expands it. You know, there are people who say, well, now what happens if he has all of these you know, now he's going to have a bunch of kids coming. To, great. Then, then somebody else, that's how, that's how the free market works. Somebody else or you will expand the program and, and meet the needs. And that's, that's the, the greatness of this system, I think. It turns into an actual competitive uh, environment where right. the best schools will be the ones who attract uh, uh, you know, attract those that really need these other options. And that, right. isn't that what we want is a free market. I always thought that's what we sure. want. It's sure. I think last I checked, it's the United States of America. Right? <laughs> it is. And, it is. And, and we don't all, and we don't all have an iPhone, right? We have iPhones, you have Androids, we have all these different Google phones. I mean, we, we get to choose what's best for us, what exactly. fits us. And that, and that's, what's so great. We haven't done that in K through 12 education. And that's why I love what, what you're doing. Can I just ask one last question oh, please for do. you? 
Please which do. is if folks want to know more about your school, where's the best place for them to go? Yep. Uh, the the good news is we we come up almost number one on a Google search. So if you put uh, okay. e- even if you didn't remember our name, if you just put in Utah County, because uh, we are in Utah County, okay. um, we do. By the way, we do transport clear from Davis County. So wow, all the way from Davis County, all the way down through Salt Lake County into Utah County, we have a shuttle that goes every day. So mm-hmm. if parents think, oh, that's too bad, I don't live in Utah County, no, get, uh, reach out to us. So if you Google Breakout School, of course, it'll come right up. But mm-hmm. if you forget our name, Breakout School, um, just Google uh, private school, ADHD, uh, Utah County, anything like that will be number one. So once again, Breakout School, if you want to go right to the website, it's breakoutschool.org, O-R-G. We are a nonprofit. Gotcha. And breakout is just B-R-E-A-K-O-U-T. Pretty easy. Gotcha. Okay. Well, Dallin, thank you. first of all, thanks for your great involvement in this issue and uh, pushing forward. And, and, and again, it's, I know that you're doing it uh, for, because you love this and, and you've got the passion for it. But you also worked on getting this law passed in Utah, which means you care about the kids of Utah uh, enough to do it. And it isn't this isn't just about you or your family or your sister or anyone else. This is about uh, the kids. And so thank you for doing that. And I appreciate you joining us. And again, I, I can't wait to look back in a couple of years and see all the progress you've made. The founder of Breakout School, uh, Dallin Richardson. So thanks for joining us, Dallin. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. All right. Great. Hey, thanks for joining us on American Potential. Thank you for listening to American Potential. You may listen to more stories from Americans working every day to expand freedom and opportunity in their communities by visiting AmericanPotential.com.